voices of the underground coming on the rebound. Lisa, Jane, Gina, Catherine, Yasmin, Naomi, voices of the underground coming on the rebound. Yeah, we got voices. Earth has not anything to show more fair. The beauty of the morning, silent, bare. You know that poem was actually written by William Wordsworth while he was walking along London's Westminster Bridge. He was inspired by the view of the city. Like Wordsworth, we too are walking across a bridge. Along a bridge into the city center. You know, in this classic poem, he describes the tranquility of the city at dawn. And presently to where we are on this timeless street in Castries. We are walking over the threshold. Into the episode of Poetry Live, Voices of the Underground. Reading this poem, I could hear the music of Chopin like a waltz. Shall we? Yes, we can. But perhaps we should be dancing to the St. Lucian polka. You know what? We need to take a break. When we return, the name of the street. Voices of the underground coming on the rebound. Lucilex Bradley Bay office is now open. But we are still available to serve you remotely. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796, 285-7859, or 285-3329. Or send an email to customer support at lucilec.com for assistance. Call 457-4433 to get bill balances. Use our free online service at myaccount.lucelect.com for detailed account information and online bill payments through your bank. Customers may also take advantage of Shopee's online or walk-in service. Lucelect encourages you to practice social distancing. Stay home, stay safe. Souvenirs at Island Gallery Shops, local cuisine at Oasis Food Court, Come upstairs, walk the strip for the best services at your fingertips. Caribbean rum shack, perfumery, and more. At the JQ Rodney Bay Mall, we've got it all. Shopping design with you in mind. Welcome back. By now, you should have guessed the name of the street. It is one of the busiest streets in Castries, where pedestrians dare you to stop while they cross the street. And if you still haven't figured out the name of the street, we've got some cue cards, pictorial cue cards. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I'll be nice for this one. Figure it out? It's Bridge Street. Bridge Street or Rue Pont is one of the main access ways across the river into the city of Castries. Yeah, and that hump bridge next to the fire station was actually built in 1904. You realize there's more than one bridge connecting the river banks into the city of Castries? Speaking about river banks, do you remember that game in the river on the bank? In the river, on the bank. In the river, <laughs> on the bank, on the bank, on the bank. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for tragedy and triumph. Our featured poet, Lisa Dublin, oh, I'm still catching my breath from In the River on the Bank. She has uplifting messages in her basement chronicles, which is reminiscent of Maya Angelou, whose poetry and quotes are famous and inspirational to all. She is an American poet, best known for her memoir, I know why the cage bird sings. We now have Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou, Margaret Johnson, 
was born on April 4, 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri. She was a well-accomplished African-American author, poet, teacher, and playwright. Her childhood was undeniably rough, and this manifested later in her art. From a very early age, Angelou was stripped of a stable childhood when her parents divorced, and she and her brother Bailey moved to Stamps, Arkansas. They were raised by her grandmother and attended public school. Sadly, extreme trauma happened to Maya when she was raped by her mother's boyfriend on a visit to Missouri. She then had to testify against him at eight years old, after which some of her uncles killed him with a beating. She felt immense guilt and responsibility for his death because of her testimony and refused to speak for the next five years. She graduated high school at 17 and three weeks later gave birth to her son Clyde. Angelo's career kicked off when she won a scholarship to study dance and acting at the California Labor School. Then in the early 1950s, at a time when interracial relationships were still very much shunned, she married a Greek sailor named Tosh Angelou. But this only lasts a few years. She started her career acting in plays both on and off Broadway, including touring Europe with Porgy and Bess. Soon after, Angelou moved to New York. She joined the Harlem Writers Guild. In 1960, she and fellow writer John Oliver Killens co-coordinated a performance of Cabaret for Freedom, which she co-wrote as a benefit for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and Civil Rights Movement after meeting Dr. King. She then becomes the SCLC's Northern Coordinator. She continues the fight for equality against the apartheid system in Africa. She produces, composes, writes screenplays and releases the first of seven autobiographies, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, 1970. Angelou's next five autobiographies are Gather Together in My Name, 1974, Singing and Swinging, and Getting Merry Like Christmas, 1976, The Heart of a Woman, 1981, and all God's Children Need Traveling Shoes, 1986. These books span over the globe and an incredible length of time, including stories of her childhood hardships over the years, the trials of being a single teenage mom, and the development of her creative career. Her poetry is just as passionate and transformative. Her activism work over the years and the year before her death, almost symbolically, she publishes her seventh autobiography, Mom and Me and Mom. Angelo dies at 86 years of age on May 28, 2014. Her poems have become common in everything from cards to literature classes. She is an undeniable example of a strong and powerful woman who has taken a painful past and reshaped it into art that has touched and transformed the hearts. Coming from the rebound sound. It's life is fresh, better than the rest. Voices of the rebound sound. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. This is a quote from Maya Angelou. This lady is so inspirational. Yes, I agree with you. She has been an inspiration for me my entire life. And I was fortunate enough to actually sit in on one of her classes to discuss some of her poetry, such as Phenomenal Woman and Still I Rise and I was actually invited to her 80th birthday party. Oh, <laughs> you know what? The, you can describe what the poet does as verbal music, the usage of imagery and metaphor to evoke this experience and emotions. Let's analyze feeling good. Written by Anthony Newley and Leslie Brickus for the musical The Roar of Grease Paint, The Smell of the Crowd, 
Nina Simone's vocal performance of the song creates an elated emotional state of freedom. The use of vivid imagery of nature to portray the depth of feeling experienced with references made to flora and fauna that are generally free and independent for instance, birds in the sky, fish in the sea, scent of pine. The sun and the stars are also used to portray the limitless joy depicted by the song. The song speaks to these features of nature as a general feeling of joy. The word new is repeated for dawn, day and life to show that this good feeling is ongoing and not short-lived. End rhymes are also used for instance sea, free, tree to maintain the idea that feeling good is truly a song of liberation. Feeling Good performed by our very own Diana Phillip. Birds flying high You know how I feel Sun in the sky You know how I feel Reels drifting over It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling good. in the sea you know how I feel river running free you know how I feel blossom on a tree you know how I feel it's a new dawn it's a new day it's a new life for me and I'm feeling good Dragonflies out in the sun, you know what I mean, don't you know? Butterflies are having fun, you know what I mean? Oh, freedom is mine, and I know how I feel. And this whole world is a new world, and a bold world for me, yeah. We'll be right back. We got voices. We got voices, yeah. We bounce out. New Select's Rodney Bay office is now open, but we are still available to serve you remotely. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796. 285-7859, 285-3593, or 285-3329. Or send an email to customer support at lucilec.com for assistance. Call 457-4433 to get bill balances. Use our free online service at myaccount.lucilec.com for detailed account information and online bill payments through your bank. Customers may also take advantage of Shopee's online or walk-in service. Lucilec encourages you to practice social distancing. Stay home, stay safe. CDF is both a champion for cultural preservation and development change agent. Established in April 2002 by the CDF Act of 2000 as the agency responsible to align the aspirations of cultural and creative individuals, groups, communities, policymakers, and civil society through the implementation of the National Cultural Policy of St. Lucia, we envision a strong, united, and proud St. Lucian community empowered by culture and creativity.
For more information on how you can partner with CDF on some of our projects and efforts, go to cdfstlucia.org or contact Cultural Development Foundation, Barnard Hill Castries, PO Box CP5405. Call us at 457-9021 or send us a fax at 459-0615. Email us at info at cdfstlucia.org. One, two, mic check. Cameras are rolling. Head up. We're back on air. Yeah, I know. I was just listening to one of Lisa Dublin's Basement Chronicles. Mastery takes time. You can get to where you want. I know. Lisa's definitely a motivator. Let's have an insight into her life. An interview with Lisa Dublin. Ordinary women with extraordinary talent. Describe your creative process. What spaces, places, and things inspire you? I don't think I really have um, a creative process per se. I think I'm thinking a lot, all the time, about everything. My mind is pretty active and it is from just thinking while I'm at the kitchen sink or cooking or cleaning up or running in particular. Any of these activities yield so much um, raw material for me to then go off and write about. So I, I think my creative process is just living and I'm very intuitive and very sensitive. So things hit me differently, I find, from a lot of people. And that is where I get inspiration. I get things to write about and to, you know, to speak about. Um, in terms of spaces, places and things that inspire me. Um, I think the people I love inspire me a whole lot. Um, I am everybody around me. There are little pieces of the people that I love in how I speak, in how I move, in the things I, I that are particular to me. I pick up a lot from the people whom I love and you know that has changed my life and I think made me just very big on development and personal development. So they inspire me, they pop up as characters um, in my poetry, in my um, prose writing, etc., you, you'll find the people that I love if you know me well enough and if they know themselves. A day in the life of Lisa Dublin. What is your life really like being the wife, mother, working professional, and a vlogger of the Basement Chronicles? Are you finding equilibrium to quote a phrase from one of your poems to all the girls? Life is very hectic. Um, I think I speak for all women <laughs> when I say that, you know, it's very difficult to find that balance, but you have to keep on trying. That's what I've, I've come to realize. So, uh, yeah, um, all of these things, we have three boys. We're very busy with basketball, with school, you know, all sorts of things. Um, but my husband is pretty good with the kids. So that, I think, gives me, he's just a great guy. So that gives me peace of mind and it gives me the space to produce a lot. I think finding this, the time and the space to do all of these things requires, um, you know, a lot of discipline, uh, sacrifice my sleep time sometimes, but that's okay because the results I think are worth it. Was there a period in your life when you felt unhinged, like the drive and passion that fuels your creativity was disappearing? I think for a while there, before we left St. Lucia, I lost my faith. Um, things happened in our lives and I figured if God cared, this would not be happening. Like seriously and literally. And I just remember saying, okay, I, I have to be a nobody. Like if I were somebody and if God cared, these kinds of mishaps and failures would not be happening. I just didn't care for a while. I just became like casual drinker, cusser, whatever. I just didn't care because I didn't know how to reconcile having bad times in my life um, with a God who said that he'd take care of me. And truth be told, I wasn't writing in that time. Like I was just like, whatever, just living life however it came because I thought like if God didn't care about me, why should I care about me anyway? And from that experience, um, a, a year later or so, after we had moved here, I began to write the poem, I Am Not Job. That's where it came from, that kind of experience, like wrestling with God. Like, if you are God, why are these things happening? And truth be told, I only got, like, the last verses of that poem 
um, just through this lockdown, just this year. Since your move to Canada, what has been your experience coming from a Caribbean context in terms of writing and culture? I think the biggest shock when I got here was that um, I was considered a, min a minority. Um, for me, coming from a homogenous society in St. Lucia where everybody looked like me, basically, and because of that, you saw people like me in positions of authority, in leadership positions, doing, you know, big things. And to, uh, you know, back in St. Lucia, um, you know, I was in the media, I was lecturing, um, I was in business. So, you know, I enjoyed a certain amount of success within the society. And then I come here and then hear all these connotations of the term um, minority. Like, what does that even mean? I understand that statistically, black people are in the minority. Like, we're, there are not as many of us as there are white people or other races. But I think there are also other connotations of minority that I do not subscribe to that you're supposed to be at the bottom of the ladder, that you're not supposed to be um, all that you can be in a society such as this, I reject that. I reject it because I don't have the blueprint of um, doing doing life like that because of where I'm from. And so I think it, it creates a very interesting coordinate to be able to negotiate the society knowing where you came from. And what have you learned about life? Oh, I love that question because I've learned a whole lot about life. I've learned that if you put in the work, you get the results. I've learned that along the way, you get connected to different people. And I've learned not to question it, but just to work it, run with it, try to figure it out and make it work. But that there are some connections that, you know, we can't really explain. Um, I've learned that even if you have to speak your truth, there's a way to do it. There's a way to be gracious and gentle and get the message across. Um, I've learned to be humble because you just don't know um, where life will lead you. And you know you will need people around you. So I've learned to just be humble and roll with the punches sometimes. You know what I got from Lisa? She it's a great innovator and she earned two master's degrees and also balancing that with, with being a mom. Yes, she's got a solid foundation. She's rooted in spirituality. She's rooted in her Christian faith. One of the things that she said to me was her faith has given her wings to fly. You know, that in itself is truly motivational. And now the performance of Lisa Dublin. Hello. Don't ask me how I'm doing. I have stopped spinning, slowing to breathe my own breath behind a mask. Masking, forcing, unmasking. Everything that can be shaken is broken along backbone or strengthened along fault lines. Darkness producing so much light refracted in a hundred places and in people's half faces. Eyes revealing what the mouth finally can no longer hide. Six feet apart is a new six feet under. Death to hustle, death to grind, death to busy, death to noise. I am breathing the breath of my own sin. I am breathing the sound of my own spin. I am breathing the sting of my own hate. I am breathing the stain of my own pride. I taste me behind the mask. Hello, do not ask me how I'm doing. I have stopped trying, resigned to a reckless resetting behind the mask. Take me as I have become, this time for the rest of our lives. This reset is a mindset shift to normalize the normal with the burial of the victims and the conjuring of browning dreams. Everyday actions turned into petitions for life. Six feet apart to make you see you've been ghosting yourself, breathing your own breath to confirm your mess. I taste my terror without the companion crowd. I hear the scream of my hidden name. I feel the cold wind of my end game. I touch a sticky darkness behind the mask. Hello, do not ask me how I'm doing. I am becoming nothing and everything behind this mask. Eyes watching, ears screaming, don't touch, don't breathe, don't approach, don't cleave. Go to work, stay home, go to school, stay home, go to die, stay home. 
Reset, pay down debt, grab watch again, embrace the tech, zoom your coffee, FaceTime grandmother's dying, stream your guts from a darkened basement. I can't believe this is happening. Even the weddings will soon have a close. Hello, doesn't matter how I'm doing. I might have stopped dying, though there's no living yet. There's no ending yet. Only the promise of anything and nothing behind the mask. I am certain Job still ached for the cherished tradition of his beloved children, while his brand new heirs resignedly welcomed the mewling of progeny by way of your compensation. I am certain Job thereafter praised you for his new blessings with a veil of fear, dressing each and every moment, wondering when next you would choose to test him with another painful lesson. I am certain Job displayed signs of smoke inhalation after his recreation, an understandable byproduct of your fire that raised his dreams to ashes to stoke a resurrection. And I am not Job. I will not be your pawn to be broken and recommissioned just to show that you are sovereign. Indeed, I am not Job. I will not die to breathe, be stripped to be equipped. You could have saved me from this. Are you sure you didn't offend, said my well-meaning friend, a modern-day Bildad interact and mock sympathetic, squeezing a smile synthetic out of the narrow sieve of his judgment. Till you've learned your lesson, you won't move on to the blessing a sister prophesied, refusing to show me your eyes that screamed the one conclusion from their group revelation where they prayed over my demise. God, answer me, if you dare. You who designed our futures and know the end from the beginning and everything in between. God, answer me if you care. It was you who promised peace in the face of war and said you were all knowing. Did you not see this coming? Answer me. I love you fiercely. You I have not abandoned. I have heard and I have answered. I did not turn my back. I love you fiercely. I brought you through this fire to flesh out your heart's desire. In me there is no error. Sometimes I let you go through, not out, the fire, not the river. Other times relief is instant. Sometimes I say no to error to lead you to greener pasture. Other times your path is clear. Sometimes I say yes to pain to give you lasting gain. Other times the change is now. Sometimes I say yes. Sometimes I say wait. Sometimes I say go. Daughter. Face me and tell me if the failure of yesterday was not replaced by the clarity of today. Daughter, stand up and face me like the woman I made you to be. Scarred to survive, unburdened to fly, weaponized to fight, humble to stand tall, full of grace to smile. God, I can't say that I understand completely or I agree with you wholeheartedly, but I was burnished through the fire. And I'm living my heart's desire, and I did not die, and I did not break, and I'm alive and well again. God, I know you now like I didn't before. Bulwark, rampart, rear guard, shield, dread god, waymaker, everything. I will trust you now because if you took me through this, you can do anything. I thoroughly enjoyed that performance by Lisa. She is definitely a performance poet. She's so lively. I totally agree with you. I love the feel of her poetry. It's relatable. Yes. We now have the final performance of Lisa Dublin. This is in celebration. This is in praise. This is in defense of every woman. This is you thinking and this is me talking. This is us supporting a woman generation. This is a woman thing. This is a girl thing. This is for the mothers and this is for the grandmothers. This is for everyone who dares to be woman. Well, to tell you the truth, being a woman just ain't easy. All that stupidness about women balancing home and work and everything in between is out of balance because it don't have no equilibrium. Because you're always leading to one side of life while your mind tugging you to go in a direction that no woman has gone before. And on top of all of that, on top of figuring out your place and trying to run your race and fighting for your space, on top of all of that, woman giving you more trouble because you is a woman. You don't know what I mean? Maybe you don't realize. Two mother crab cannot occupy the same universe as why your colleagues at work don't really talk to you. 
But that's funny. And that don't make much sense because these women talking to every other mother crab in the same small universal space. So you think it must be something you do why they don't like you. And women, yes, women just like you will want to cut you down just because you like them trying to define your life. And they want to tell you how to dress. And why you don't look good today? Huh? And they think highly of themselves, I tell you, to think that their laughter and their opinions on your style and your hair and your shoes mean a thing. As if in the little universe you're trying to set up for yourself, they mean more than they're supposed to. So, this is for all the girls who dare to be different, who step out in bright yellow like the blazing sun when all the world is in corporate blue. This is for all the girls who don't care about the status quo uh, and fling another dimension in the face of what it means to be a woman. This is for all the women who they say have too much style, the stockinged women and the made-up women and the women with the fake accents and the long nails who make the plain Janes feel less than a dollar, even though they themselves don't even have a cent. And this is for all the girls who stand, make the world stand at attention with the swing of their hips and the appeal of their glance. This is for those women who make other girls hold on tightly to their men, not because they want them or even try to get them, but because they shine too brightly not to be noticed by every single one of them. But this is for all the girls who are loyal to the sisters, who won't betray them with their men or diss them without reason. This is for all the girls who see men as colleagues, not just lovers, and who run shoulder to shoulder with the eagles and the tigers. But being a woman is sometimes a strange, strange thing. All that potential and sometimes no power because it has no unity in the cup. The only time you really have sisters is when you have a tragedy for all the world to see. They come like ants on a sugar hill to take a tasty morsel of the story to satisfy their hope that you ain't as good as people say you are. But the moment you back up again, the moment you begin to blaze, they stalk out, avert their eyes when they see you coming across the road instead of saying good morning, because they're comparing themselves to you and you coming out on top, and they can't handle that. And they're hoping and they're praying something will happen to make you lose your mind. And they're hoping and they're praying your man will leave you or your business will bust or you will be embarrassed. But they don't know, in the long journey of your life, them things done happen already is why and how is by the grace of God you're surviving today. They don't know if they can walk in your size 11 shoes, but they're jealous for them all the same. So, this is for all the girls who make things happen, who aren't afraid to fall for the rush of the comeback. This is for the girls who know the pain of a vision, the grind of the challenge, and the price of the fight. This is for all the girls who'd rather read than do dishes, who'd rather write and create than skin chicken and fry fishes. This is for the girls who run hot and sweaty with ideas and whose hair won't stay in place while they chase their ideals. This is for all the girls who share themselves with the world, every part of themselves except their very soul. This is for all the girls who redefine womanhood into something vast and encompassing all shades of their personhood. But to be a woman, you have to make a choice in your head first and then get your heart and your body to follow. It's what you want that will make you decide how to move is what you want. The ring and the husband, the family, your degrees, your career and international affairs is either you make a choice to partner with your man or to run your whole show yourself and don't leave no place for this compromised stupidness. Where it fall, it fall. When he come, he come. And if he come, he come. And you don't care. But if you want different, you have to learn to play the game and toe the line. You have to choose which battles to fight and learn when to just sit tight. So it's either you're going to be a woman who could live with her man or a woman unto yourself. And when you make that choice, you have to stick with it and leave every other option for another life where it would have no God and no family and no society to remind you.
So, this is for all the girls who straddle pretty skirts and loose pants, sexy heels and ballet flats, flowing tresses and quick one plaits, chic acrylics and laptop digits. This is for the girls who struggle with their choice, who want their husband in their bed and their degree above their head. This is for the girls who appreciate the men who make them feel loved and wanted, though they're strong and independent. But this is also for the other kinds of girls who go it alone, who chart their own course and buy their own home. This is for all the girls whose minds can be tamed by any man or woman, who question every norm and break every tradition. You know, I think it's wonderful that the director decided to use this poem to all the girls to end the series. Definitely. Many times I feel in the society, people try to pigeonhole us, try to determine what we should and should not do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and as we saw in many of the poets throughout the series, you can be a nurse and a poet. You could be a professor and a poet. Mm -hmm. There are many sides to us as human beings and we should be allowed to be free to be ourselves. Yes, and I want to see, to embrace being different, embrace being unique, embrace being you. I see you're wearing your Art Reach t-shirt. Yeah, Art Reach, which is from it's the National Arts Festival. Yes, the National Arts Festival is actually created by the Cultural Development Foundation. Yeah, and it's virtual now. Yes. Let's do a recap of the series. Well, let's just do a little limbic poem. What say you? Let's do this. I'll start. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's begin. There was a poetry show. That started six episodes ago. It ran for a while. For more than a mile. And now it's time to file. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the series of all our featured poets. Gina. Catherine. Naomi. Solita. Jane. And Lisa. Thank you for being part of Poetry, Poetry Live, Live Voices, Voices of, of the, the Underground. Coming on the rebound. The rebound sound. We got voices. Voices. Better than the rest. Don't, don't, don't. We got mm -hmm. voices. We got voices, yeah. We bounce up. Hold you. 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 Don't 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 don